Now, myofibroma, um, commonly in kids or babies especially, but also can be in adults. I've even seen it in elderly adults. So, so you know, it's not only for kids. And there's kind of three main clinical presentations. The single solitary form, a dermal or sub-Q nodule, often in the head and neck, but really can occur at any site. Then there's a multifocal form where you get multiple nodules in the skin and sometimes even can have bone involvement. Um, I've also seen solitary lesions in the bone, like the jaw or other bones. Um, obviously not going to be very relevant probably if, you all, if all you do is derm path, but it does come up in my role as a bone and soft tissue pathologist. And then there is a much more rare, um, I've never seen a case actually, a generalized form where peop- the babies can have uh, multiple uh, myofibromas, including internal organs. And uh, because of the numerous uh, lesions in the organs, it actually can be associated with mortality, even though it is a benign tumor. Um, if you have hundreds of them in the visceral organs, it's going to be a problem. So like I said, I've never actually seen a real case of that, but, but just to know that there are some different presentations. And uh, the interesting thing is that these can be simple excision, even incomplete excision. It's really rare for them to recur. They can sometimes even spontaneously resolve. So here is like the textbook classic example of myofibroma. This is the one that if, if you've never seen one of these before and you're a, a, you know, a trainee in the audience, this is the one to burn into your mind as, as the image of what the classic one should look like. There are some variations on this that are morphologically more challenging, but here you've got these big nodules and you've got cellular zones in between. So it's a biphasic lesion from low power. That is really helpful, okay? And the, uh, the nodules here are either bluish or pink. I find that they often have kind of a bluish, almost chondroid appearance. I like to call them pseudochondroid nodules. But technically, people refer to these as myoid nodules. But they don't really look very much like smooth muscle to me. So I don't really love that name. And then in between, we've got this cellular area of kind of nondescript oval to spindle cells. Hypercellular, may have some mitoses, but does not have pleomorphism. And then there's dilated kind of branching staghorn vessels in here usually. Oh, and there's arrows that show you all that. Sometimes I forget the things I put in my slides. So that's what you want, the two zones, the myoid or pseudochondroid nodules and the hypercellular zones. And there's a closer look at that bluish tinge that gives it a kind of chondroid appearance. And oftentimes there's these dilated dilated cleft-like vascular spaces wrapped around the edge of these nodules. There's some ectatic staghorn-like blood vessels. And there's these uh, bland, uniform, uh, kind of hypercellular zones of oval to spindle cells in between. And sometimes those can be very prominent, sometimes they can be very focal. Now, here is a, an example of myofibroma that looks quite different. And ones like this can give you pause because they don't have that classic appearance. The, the features are more vague here. And when we go in closer, you can see there are kind of some cellular areas that are a little spindly and, and almost fascicular. And then out here, there's kind of a very vague myoid or pseudochondroid, like a vague, ill-defined nodularity at the periphery there. So this was also a myofibroma, but one that's much more challenging morphologically. See, it kind of, uh, it kind of has that same, uh, that same um, uh, biphasic uh, appearance, uh, but it, it looks different than the, convention, than the classic example I just showed. Here's another one that's classic, and this one was very blue. And in fact, the person who sent this in was actually thinking this was going to be some sort of a myxoid uh, tumor. But you can see it's got the, the pseudochondroid stuff. It's got the cellular zones, and it's got some staghorn vessels. And this one had been biopsied previously, and I think this was one of the only ones I've seen that actually did recur or persist. Um, a year or so later, it grew back. Um, I think it had just been shaved off the first time, and it just came back again. So probably it just can kind of the tip of the iceberg got removed, and the bottom continued to grow. So that's okay. There's a, a closer look at the, the staghorn vessels there and the pseudochondroid nodules. All right, so we covered all of those features. Actin will be positive, often with that kind of wispy, tram track, myofibroblastic sort of uh, pattern. Desmond is uh, classically going to be negative, but most of the time these are just an H and E diagnosis. I feel um, I don't I don't uh, often do stains on them unless they're kind of unusual. Now I'll show you. This is one of those times that's kind of unusual, and so we know that that a subset of myofibromas can have atypical features. They can be hypercellular. They can be only fascicles that intersect, like this one, kind of that almost herringbone pattern a little bit, and they can lack myoid nodules or pseudochondroid nodules, and they can be mitotically active. They can have necrosis. 
So all of those features, when you see a myofibroma with those features, especially if they're lacking in the, the myoid or pseudochondroid nodule department, that can be concerning and, and give you concern for possible malignancy. And yet, what, it, what we, we did a study, uh, or participated in a study um, on this uh, some years back, and we found that these uniformly behaved in a benign manner, even though they could be uh, quite scary microscopically. I, uh, sometimes they can have infiltrative borders. I've seen ones that infiltrated into the bone, particularly in the head and neck, and, and were uh, very scary radiographically. Um, and as far as I know, they behaved well um, in the end. So, so uh, you don't usually have pleomorphism in myofibroma, but you can have some of these other features that would make you be concerned for malignancy in other contexts. So there's our paper about that in uh, AJSP 2014. If, you're, if you encounter one of those, you can go pull that paper and read up on it.